I can't believe I'm back. Like, I actually feel like this is fake. I don't know what happened to me, but besides traveling a lot for work, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you would know that. If you don't, make sure you follow me. It's Makeup by Makeup, which I will post up here. Besides that, it's just been hard. Like, my laptop crashed and my lighting system fell really badly. I thought it was broken. I couldn't figure it out in my tripod. It was just a big disaster. But anyway, I am back. I'm not sure how um, routine I'm gonna have to, that I'm gonna be able to be because of my travel schedule, but I hope to do at least one video a week. I have this new laptop now that I think I can travel with um, because it's still lightweight enough to travel with as well as has the RAM and the processor that is required to, you know, edit videos. So that is my goal, so I really hope I'm able to stick to that. But I thought I would shoot something quick and easy today. I'm a little bit concerned about editing. I hope that I still have it, that it's easy for me. But that's why I wanted to shoot something that, that was easy, that wouldn't require as much editing. So I wanted to do a monthly favorites. This is my September favorites. Being that I've been gone for nine months, I have a lot of products in here that are things that I've enjoyed, you know, for a large part of this nine months that I've been gone as well. So I have um, makeup, skincare, hair care, food, and clothes. So let's go ahead and get started. I have two sunscreens to share with you. I believe in sunscreen more than any other form of skincare just because it's really important to take care of your skin now before you have to take care of it later when it's already gone too far. And I'm just a big believer in sunscreen in general. So I have been using two different ones. One is the Glossier Invisible Shield uh, Daily Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 35. Um, my skin feels good with this, especially because it feels like water. Let me show you guys. Check that out. That is it. It is super runny, like water. Um, it doesn't give you any flashback. It doesn't give you that weird grayish purple tint that most sunscreen gives, so I love it for this. Um, or for that reason, it barely has a scent to it. Like it has a slight sunscreeny scent, but nothing that's uh, too noticeable. So love that. Have, I've been noticing that my skin still looks good, so I don't know how to judge a sunscreen in terms of that, besides the fact that it wears well under makeup, it you know is comfortable to wear, all of that. So love that the second one is my cover fx one this is invisible uh cover invisible sunscreen broad spectrum spf 30 so this one's 35 this one's 30. what i like about this and what i dislike about this is that it definitely has silicone in it it definitely feels very silicone-y so if you do not like that feeling which i generally don't that might be something that you are averse to with this sunscreen but the reason i like it is because it helps control oil really well However, any product that has silicone in it for me feels very uncomfortable to wear and it feels like it's clogging my pores. It might just be like a mental thing and not really happening, but due to that, I don't wear this very often, but I wear this only when I do need a lot of oil control because that does help with that. Then for a primer, I've spoken before about how my MAC SPF 50 is no longer being created anymore. Um, it, it actually stopped like five years ago. The FDA has some rule on SPFs being reformulated every five years and so they changed the formula of that, which just was not the same. So I had to find something else, and I re retorted back to my Smashbox Photo Finish Light. This is the closest primer to that in terms of oil control, but it's not even half as successful at oil control as that one was for me. But this is a close second. So let me know your thoughts. Maybe you guys have used this, or maybe you have something else in mind that you think is awesome. I have been loving the Estee Lauder Nude Cushion Foundation. My color is different in this. I'm the 4W1 because they don't have 4N2 in this like they did in the uh, Double Wear. But what this is, is that it's a foundation that comes out through twisting it, comes out from this cushion thing. You can apply it like this. However, whenever a product has a cushion already on it like this, I already know it's not going to work for me. I don't like products like this to spread the makeup. It's never even. So I end up still using a brush and I tend to use brushes like this. But it just gives you a really flattering, lightweight coverage that really looks like skin. It, it looks like a tinted moisturizer, but better. I don't know, like if you already have good skin or are somebody who wants something that's really lightweight, you would love this. It does well with my oil control as well, and the color range is good. It's not as good as the Devil Wear, but you'll still be able to find something just because with it being this low coverage, um, it's very forgiving in terms of the color. The Fenty Foundation. This is my sample because I have literally bought 
five or six different shades of the Fenty line out of which I thought each of them was working but then it would like change and get darker as time went on things would keep changing so this is color 310 which I really do think is my color they are sold out which is why I have it in a sample but I've been loving this I will definitely do a full review but I was waiting until I actually got the real bottle in to show you guys talk about packaging that type of thing but I think 310 is closest to me which is weird because my friend Sharifa also on YouTube uses 310 too but she looks so much more fair than me so I don't really know but I am going to continue to keep using this until I get to shoot that video which will hopefully be next week so stay tuned but in general if you guys can find your shade in the Fenty line I would. The entire line is bomb especially if you have oily skin like me. The only concealer that I have really been using all the time is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer but I've just been loving this. I use this with this IT Cosmetics brush which I'll talk about later. Dip it in, apply it. It feels very gel-like or very cushiony. Um, it's lightweight, very natural. It really just sinks into my skin without looking like anything that, that looking like I have anything on, which I love. And I use the color Biscuit. And on my skin, if I have a blemish, then I'll use um, Caramel, which are also my colors in the Radiant Creamy Concealer, also my NARS. Then to apply foundation and concealer, I have been loving this little guy by Fenty Beauty. It's their beauty sponge. Don't know the exact name of it, but this is what I use, and this is it dry. Um, when it's wet, it does become larger in size. This is the most comparable sponge to the Beauty Blender. I almost feel like it feels the exact same, or at least... 99.9 percent .9 the exact same it's obviously a different shape you get this flat side which i like to pat in foundation and I, people have been complaining about this edge being cut off like this and not having a point but i like that because when i apply a concealer i'm going up like this and i can really get around my eye really well as well as around my nose and i haven't used the back of this but you can definitely use that too that would probably be the most similar to your beauty blender if you use it from the side like this but I don't feel like it soaks that foundation. I really like it. Then on to cheeks. Um, another product by Glossier that I picked up in July is the Cloud Paint. This is in the color Dusk. They only have four colors. That's my only uh, grievance with the line. But the reason for why I really like this is because the texture is really liquidy. It doesn't have that creamy texture, which I love because the second I put cream on my oily skin, it's never a good thing. So having something that's more liquidy like this is awesome because you apply it, you dot it on, it's actually going to move. It's not that you apply a cream and it's just like there and you can blend. Like you can blend this really easily with your fingers. It's very non-fuss, but I do wish they had more colors. I have been loving the Jaclyn Hill palette uh, for Morphe. And I'm sure, well I'm showing you guys the back, but this is the front. Here are all the colors. I have just been loving it because I think that it's very good quality. It has all the colors that you actually really would use, which is everything here. And very few of like those fun colors. Those fun colors are fun to have, but they're not things that the normal average female wears all the time. So having colors like this is really what you need. I don't think any of the colors in here are so unique and so different and like jaw dropping. But what I do love about this is that it's very affordable. So if you guys are beginners and starting and like want to build your kit, or want to have good quality makeup that's affordable, that would be a great option for you. I get that she's trying to like create so many options for everybody, but it's too big for me to travel. As a result, it's only at home um, for me, but very good quality, very affordable, has all the colors that you would want. Next, Smashbox did a collaboration with Shea Mitchell with four of these little eyeshadow palettes. I showed this to you guys a long time ago. This one is the Ablaze Eye Palette, and this is what I take to travel with, so I just love this. It has all of the warm tones, which I really like for my crease. It has your sort of golden-y, off-gold types of colors as well for your eyelid. And it has your darker crease color. And it has your highlight colors, matte and satin. So this palette is super easy, very non-fuss. This is my everyday easy go-to, don't really think too much about type of palette. And the size cannot be beat. This is so easy to transport. Then sticking with the theme of eyes, my Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara is everything. You guys already know this. Don't just speak too much about it. Um, for eyebrows, my Kevin Aquan uh, Precision Eyeliner in Brunette. I love this. I have this on right now. Um, I think, to me, it's the formula of this. It's, it's sort of a harder formula. So if you like something that glides on really easily, that's definitely more of the ABH cosmetic style. 
but I like this because with it being a small tip like this and a rounded pencil um, you have this is that the pencil that you would use if you want a lot of precision but if you just want that like one swipe easy this is not it you definitely have to work a lot harder with this but I like the formula of this a lot it really stays on it doesn't move I don't feel like I'm constantly making mistakes because it's moving so quickly so the Laura Mercier translucent powder I know she has two colors now but this is the original the loose setting powder in translucent um, this really for the under eye area is awesome I know people use this for all over the face it's, it doesn't work for me for all over the face um, it just looks white and it doesn't help with oil either but for under the eyes I, I don't think any other powder can set as well as this can even right now I feel like my under eye makeup has sort of budged I've been wearing this for a few hours but if I had set it with this it wouldn't have so really love that then another face type of product this is the confidence in your glow by it cosmetics instant warm glow so again very travel friendly if you guys sort of see a theme here it's all the things that are smaller just easier for me um, this is a highlight blush and contour palette normally I hate stuff like this I just feel like it's so gimmicky it's very hard to find your perfect everything just these three colors but I freaking love it reason is because this is a potent satin finish highlighter which I prefer to things that are really glittery um, but it still has that nice like sheen so it doesn't look like it's being overdone this blush if you can notice right here is where I've used the most this right in the middle is what I dip my brush into and I use that as blush so like that's that's actually my blush right now too and in here is the bronzer um, this bronzer for me isn't necessarily my favorite but if I'm missing something and I didn't bring my bronzer with me then I really do like this it's just that it's very, very, very pigmented, so it's easy, a very little bit goes a long way. And having a matte blush like this is just my favorite. I don't usually go for shimmery blush. Then continuing on with the cheeks theme, this is Burnished uh, Bronzer by uh, Makeup Geek. And I freaking love this. I've talked about this a bit on Instagram. But her products are just awesome. Like, she really puts thought into her stuff because... Her products are affordable and it's so highly pigmented. I have this on right now as well. I first um, contoured with the Smashbox contour sticks, then I put this on, then I have other stuff as well, which I know with a lot. Um, but this is a great product if you're looking for something that's highly, highly pigmented. This is a, her highlighter called Ignite, which I thought was going to be way too dark. I was looking at it when I first got it and I was like, there's no way this is ever going to work on me. But if you like that easy shine without looking like it's overdone, not trying to like, you know, glow so people can see you in the moon, like this is that one for you. Um, a couple of brushes that I've been loving. This guy right here by Sigma. This is the FX or F80. This is from the Sigmax collection that came out a long time ago, but these do sell by themselves too. This is my absolute favorite for foundation. This brush does not soak up anything, and I'm not the type of person who likes to pack on the foundation. I like very natural foundation, and so when I'm going for that light coverage look, this is the best brush possible. It also helps to sheer out foundations that are very high coverage, so I love this. Next is this brush by Morphe. This is the M509. This is what I use for to set my under eye concealer. I also use this to highlight sometimes. I've used this to help with my contour. I've used this for powder. This is sort of my, you know, this is like the MVP type of brush, which whenever you have it, if you can't find something else, you can make do with this one. Then this is my MAC 287. If you notice, the skinny duo fiber brush. I use this specifically to get in the corner right here when I'm doing my concealer because a beauty blender does not get into this corner and I get lines down here if I don't like rub this out. I also, because I have large pores in my nose, if I'm, if I'm using a beauty blender and you're doing this patting motion it's not like setting in your pores so I go in and rub out that area with this I get in the corner of my nose with this as well this brush right here is by it cosmetics this is the heavenly Lux no tug dual eyeshadow brush number five this came to me in a kit with some concealers love this for concealer this is my this is my favorite brush for the NARS concealer actually it just helps blend it easily this is that no fuss you know that your makeup's gonna look good um, if you use this brush type of brush so these are two different liquid lipsticks from NARS one is pink and one is more nude the two colors are just what I needed which is the nude and um, actually this was supposed to be save the queen not London calling so 
Save the Queen and just what I needed and I mix them both together. What I do is I put on Save the Queen first, which is very pink. Before it dries, I put on um, just what I needed on top. Keep blending and you have the perfect mauve muty type of color. And this is the first lipstick formula that is long wear for me that does not leave that gross line over here look crusty after a while. In general, liquid lipsticks are very comfortable for me to wear, so I never had an issue with that. But if you guys want something that really lasts all day, this is the formula. It's awesome. I have talked about these shoes on my Instagram before, but I seriously have to bring it up again. These are by Stuart Weitzman. I don't know the name of them, but I'm going to try to link them down below. If you guys have events or occasions where you need to wear a heel, but you aren't very comfortable in heels like me, or you're, you're going to be wearing them for a while, this is your best bet. It has this little tie, which is a cute, like, feminine detail. The heel is three inches, so it's not a kitten heel. I think kitten heels are less than, or two inches or less. So this gives you that, like, stance of wearing a heel. And this is literally the most comfortable heel I have ever worn. Like, I don't know what it is. Stuart Weitzman has been, like, the best find for me for comfortable shoes. It is a luxury shoe store, so it's going to be expensive. But... If you have issues with heels, then this is the store that you need to visit for sure. Then, I have been loving these overalls um, by Revolve. And, well, I guess I shouldn't say by Revolve because they're different brands. This one is Taylor Hill by Joe's Jeans. I have a couple of things by Joe's Jeans, actually, so I know that the brand is good. But I wanted to actually talk about Revolve because I have been loving the clothes on that website. So... It's just revolveclothing.com. I use the app and just love it. But they have like good stuff and their return policy is awesome. It's free shipping, returns, um, all of that. And it's two day shipping. So if you have an event coming up or something, it's just the best. This is not even a sponsored thing. I literally have been using this for months and months and months and saved my life. Lastly, two food items. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen me make a lot of acai bowls. And this is usually what I have for breakfast every day, and I love it. My camera just died, but really quick to finish what I was saying, um, I've been getting these uh, organic acai packets from Trader Joe's, that purple packet that I just held up for you. It comes in a pack of four, and acai berries are a superfood that are not grown in the U.S., so it's always going to come in the form of a powder or a puree or something. And I put cocoa powder, a couple of berries, and coconut milk, and create this bowl, which is so healthy for you and so delicious and it's a great way to get your sugar in if you're a sugar fiend like me without having anything bad. I put almond butter on it as well, chia seeds, um, hemp seeds, all kinds of stuff. And on top I put my other favorite thing which is this cocoa almond spread which gives you a little bit of that chocolate fix um, while still being healthy. So that is it guys. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to read your comments down below. Let me know there's something particular, something in particular you want to watch. I know the Fenty Beauty is probably up your alley and something that you guys want to watch. But if there's anything else, please post down below and I will talk to you soon. Bye!